now you have a market that's really being driven on optimism and the fact that we're going to get to work. These, you know, many of the jobs, we just had this jobs report on Friday where so many jobs were lost. But I think that if you look at where the jobs are lost, there should be an expectation that 70 to 85 percent of those jobs may come back in some way, shape or form. Now, some of them may take a little bit longer, but I would think that many of those jobs will come back pretty quickly. To your point, however, if there was another really big outbreak, all bets are off a little bit that way, we would expect to see a sell off. I think it's really interesting right now as we see Germany and uh, you know England getting back to work a little bit. I think you may see the U.S. take a little bit of clues from there too, because if you think about when the U.S. actually went into more of a shutdown mode, it really took its key off Italy and how bad things were going in Italy before we really went to a shutoff mode here in the U.S. So I think some positive news out of Europe. And hopefully the cases in the U.S. in the five or six states that have opened up more fully will level off. And with that, hopefully we can go a little bit higher. And I think you bring up a great point right now. Though the market is trading on optimism versus reality at some point. I think it may be till at least mid-June when those two start to collide as, as the states get back to work. And then we'll see where we're really at. Right. Uh, fair enough, JJ. In fact, just extending uh, that, uh, you know, line of thinking, uh, we had Longview Economics uh, doing the rounds on CNBC.com with their view on how the credit markets are signaling the equity markets rally to be just a relief rally uh, in a bear market. And this is what exactly they are saying. They're saying over the last six to seven weeks, the S&P 500 has rallied 34 percent from intraday lows. Credit spreads, which is the gap between the yield on a corporate bond versus a government bond, have been a little changed during that period, uh, standing at 19% uh, uh, from that level, moving down to just 17%. That type of muted price action in credits is normal during an equity market relief rally within a bear market. So they're saying this is not the end of the bear market. Would you agree? Well, as I said, I think, you know, we may see one more sell-off. I don't know if it's gonna if we're gonna go back to where we were on the lows, but right now it's kind of a strange market. We're through earnings season, and let's face it, this is the strangest earnings season of all time because no company wanted to give forward guidance. So now what happens, even though the VIX is back below 30, uh, what's really strange is a low VIX, but I think the intraday volatility will be incredibly high. We saw it today, you know, last night when the futures opened. Uh, or at least last night here in the U.S., yesterday morning uh, over in Singapore, we saw futures rally pretty quickly. It sold off quite a bit, rallied again during the day today, and then sold off on the close. That's the price of action, type of action I think you're going to continue to see. Why? Because there's not a lot to trade on. We have two primary things we're trading on right now. Rumors of maybe a trade war, maybe not, and more importantly, COVID-19 cases. So when you trade in breaking news markets, the biggest thing I think for your viewers to keep in mind is you probably have to keep your positions a little bit smaller and expect intraday volatility. With, and we can have big intraday volatility, as I said, without the VIX actually necessarily moving because it measures more day to day. And that's what you have to be more careful of right now.